My name is Serge Thomas, and I live in Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm originally from Akron, Ohio, and I've been living here uh, in the D.C. area for 12 years now. Um, I was a registered Republican and, in my own way, active in Republican circles for about 24 years, from 1992 up until about 2016. Um, I had a chance to intern in a Republican senator's office. I had a chance to work on uh, four campaigns, three more extensively than the fourth one, which was for a few weeks a congressional race in Ohio. And I was also a member of my uh, school's college Republicans. I went to Wittenberg University, small school in Springfield, Ohio. And I can tell you that being a a, minor, a minority Republican in the 1990s wasn't easy. Um, you're painfully aware that the party had a blind spot on race and diversity. This is a changing nation. But you thought you could still make some good in the party and try to be a voice of reason steering them in the right direction. That all went out the window when Trump became active in the party primary, uh, became the nominee, and wrote that nomination to the presidency. The party's in a different place. It's become a populist, nationalist party. It's become a party where mean is the coin of the realm. It's a party where greed is openly celebrated, and there's a disdain, an open disdain, for democratic norms and the rule of law. I mean, for me, instead of being open to try to uh, keep people from, from voting, compete. If your ideas are good, then you should be able to persuade as many people as possible. If your ideas are bad, you lose. They don't want to do that. So I did not support Trump in the presidential primary here in Maryland, nor did I support him in the uh, general election. I wrote in Governor Kasich in both. Um, and I left the Republican Party uh, the week of Thanksgiving 2016. It's been four years this coming November. And I was an independent for a while, and I later became a Democratic Party supporter here about a month ago, if not two. This fall, I expect to vote for Vice President Biden. I think that the nation is exhausted and embarrassed by the Trump presidency. I think it's also appalled, genuinely appalled, at the callousness and cruelty of Republican governments. And though I don't think I was a part of doing all that for a long time, because I basically believed in treating people fairly with respect, I believe in reasonable tax, uh, taxation and good governance, even if it's limited, you still have to have a government that's able to do something. It could be argued that I was part and parcel of a party that's descended into populist, nationalist, authoritarian madness, um, if one wants to look at it that way. There's no way that this country can credibly survive, credibly survive, another four years of a Trump presidency. He's already a divisive enough figure. He's already rattling the cages of our constitutional republic, rights, norms, and observances. Who knows where this country is going to be if he is reelected for another four years? Others don't see it that way. That's, the, you know, the beauty of living in this country. But I do have a very genuine concern that we do not have a viable vibrant two-party system. Uh, both parties aren't perfect, but I would say that the Democratic Party is better prepared to at least navigate the storms of its own weaknesses and, and be a governing party. The Republican Party wants to be the party of cranks, bigots, plutocrats, and, and basically uh, hyper-religious people. I know from my years in the Republican Party that's not every Republican I've met, but too many of them ascribe to this. There are too many people who are silent. And um, that's my reason why I am 
and the party I'm in. There's no going back to the Republican Party. I'll just be basically one of these infuriating moderate Democrats that progressives may be frustrated with, but still, still would want to work with them. So that's my story. That's my story.